Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL League One. We will look back at the week that was, get you ready for the weekend that will be. And once again, reminder, because of uh, activity involving Hurricane Ian, just keep an eye on all of your schedules for all your favorite teams, regardless of division and regardless of level of play, because things may change just to make sure that everyone in your circle is safe so we can continue to enjoy uh, everything going on in the world of soccer. All right, so let's go back before we go forward and look at activity in USL League One from the last seven days. And let's start with uh, what happened. Now, once again, we look at midweek and weekend as everybody's trying to get caught up with uh, all of their games uh, across the board. Tucson and North Carolina FC. Tucson at Keno North got a win a week ago by the score of 1-0 at a minus 116. Uh also on the board, Northern Colorado knocking off Union Omaha as uh, Northern Colorado is continuing to climb the ladder, get the big win at a plus-125 at home. Central Valley Fuego shut out forward Madison at Fresno State by the score of 3-0. Then on the weekend, your five games all across the board, all very, very important. Richmond kickers, Central Valley Fuego, 1-1 draw for Richmond and Central Valley at a plus-313. Charlotte Independence knock off North Carolina FC at a minus 133 by the score of 2-1. to one. Ford Madison and South Georgia Tormenta at Breeze Stevens. Tormenta get the big win 1-0 there at a plus 172. Game of the week, Northern Colorado, could they continue their winning ways as Greenville Triumph came to town? Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at USL League One, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. And we are underway here from Severance. In Severance on Wednesday night, it was cold and rainy. Coach Diane said, I loved it. He said, I wish it was like this all the time. There's a shot in a goal, and Christensen makes the save. With that PK in stumpage. Prentice heading it forward, muscling. And we've got a whistle. That was offside, I believe. So that is the second yellow. Here it is coming in. It's against Robles again. Gets that left ankle. Pearson did stabbing at it. And he draws his second yellow. We'll bring some fresh legs out there. It'll be Nico Brown coming in momentarily. Prentice shifting left. His pass shot to save by Christensen. Good touch there by Amon. Yard area. Prentice, so gifted. Look at that touch. Amon was able to cut it off. That ball volleyed out of the air. Shot in. Saved by Christensen. And he's able to secure it. Left guarding that near post. Robles. And then it was Para. Now it's a one-man wall, built by Waldeck. Arthur Rogers plays it down and volleyed by Parr again. Christensen always in the right spot. Near side, he comes to Lukic. Lukic with space, Rogers to his right. Lukic turns it up middle of the field. He's gonna take a blast from distance. It hits and then hit it in. A score! Irvin Parra set up by the long distance blast for Irvin Parra. Here's Lukic igniting it, hit the side piping, and then Parra sensing it in the right spot, headed it down and immediately crediting teammate Stefan Lukic. So we will have another sub coming in. Jamie Smith comes in. That shot in. We've seen his ability to get power on this throw all the way out in front. Headed down. Save. And then to score. Incredible. They've done it again. 
in stoppage. Can you believe it? Triumph fans, remarkable. All started by the Lapovitz throw in, headed out, rebound, and then punched in by Evan Lee. Initial save by Olsen, but it was Lee with those long legs getting the right foot and powering it in to the lower corner. Sent down, up in the air, whistle blows, and that is it. It was Jamie Smith. The ball hit his elbow. Point shared at a plus 229 on the board, and at Keno North, Tucson had a six-point week, knocking off Chattanooga Red Wolves by the score of 2-1 at a plus 1. 77, so that gets us into the standings and the craziness with only a handful of matches to go, either three, two, three, or four matches to go for teams in USL League One. Richmond, five points clear, unbeaten in their last five. They've won 13 of 27 this year, and they are at 46 points. Now the fun starts. Greenville's at 41 points. They've drawn three of their last four, and they have 11 wins. Union Omaha's at 41. They've lost three of their last four. They're at 10 wins. Tormenta's at 40 points. They are uh, unbeaten in their last three heading into this weekend. Charlotte Independence, 27 matches played, 39 points. They've won their last three. Chattanooga Red Wolves right now, they are in the final playoff spot at 37 points. All over the board, 1-1-1 one, one, and one in their last three. They've drawn two of their last five. Below the playoff line, Northern Colorado, they've won three of their last five, unbeaten in four of their last five, but they played 28 matches they have 36 points. Central Valley, 26 matches played, so matches in hand, points to be gotten. Nine wins, 34 points. They've won two of their last four. Ford Madison, wrong time of the year to lose four in a row. That's what they've done. Seven wins through 28 matches. They're at 32 points. FC Tucson, unbeaten in their last five. They continue to climb the table. They're at 30 after 26 matches. North Carolina FC at 7, 5, and 14. They've lost three of four, and they are in last place at 26 points. So in reality, you're looking at five team, you're looking at five points separating six teams, two through seven right now in the playoff picture. And if you include Central Valley in the mix because of their matches in hand uh, over Northern Colorado, they have a match in hand over everyone else. They can close the gap as well. So you have three, six, seven teams separated by seven points as we continue to head into what's uh, going on in USL League One. So that's your that's your grid for the standings. So let's take a look at the schedule coming up. And once again, we have midweek and weekend, 7.30 on Wednesday night. North Carolina FC is hosting Central Valley Fuego. And Central Valley is a plus 202 underdog. Your draws a plus 247. North Carolina FC is a plus 112. So looking at the weekend schedule that will get us through the end of September, it is... The one match in on Wednesday, that takes care of everything. No Friday night football, nothing there. So Saturday, October 1st, you get your five matches before we end up with midweek weekend all over again. Triumph Stadium at Legacy early, 7 o'clock on Saturday, FC Tucson and Greenville Triumph. 7 o'clock at Wake Med, North Carolina FC hosting Union Omaha. 7.30, a big one. Chattanooga hosting Charlotte Independence. 7.30, Optum Sports Medicine Field at Tormenta Stadium. South Georgia Tormenta hosting Richmond Kickers, anticipating a sellout for the first game ever in the history of Tormenta Stadium in Statesboro. And then at 1030 at Chukchansi Park in Fresno, California, Central Valley hosting Northern Colorado Hailstorm. So that's your grid as we are winding down the number of matches here in the regular season. Remember, the regular season ends October 15th, and so you have – Everything lined up after next Wednesday for the final two match days with everyone in USL League One catching up with all of the action that they have had to catch up with with uh, the Open Cup and chasing things like that. So news in and around the league in and of itself, uh, 28 players from eight countries selected for senior and youth international duty out of USL Championship and USL League One. Very, very cool to see that. Six from El Salvador, two from Jamaica, two from New Zealand, six from Puerto Rico, two from Sierra Leone, six from Trinidad and Tobago. Youth internationals 
have another 10. So you've got one from Chile, two from Mexico, seven from the United States and youth internationals. Looking at uh, USL League One activity, Nelson Flores from North Carolina FC uh, representing El Salvador. Uh, you also have... Uh, working our way down the list, Nicolas Cardona from Puerto Rico for Chattanooga Red Wolves. You've got Jaden Cervania from North Carolina FC representing Puerto Rico as well. You also have uh, scanning very, very quickly, Alvin Jones from Trinidad and Tobago for forward Madison. And then you get into the uh, the youth play as well with the 10 youth internationals all heading to, uh, representing teams in USL championships. So USL League One represented very, very cool to uh, see that going on with USL League One and USL Championship. 28 players called up for senior and youth international duty in September for the FIFA window. Team of the week for week 25, it's uh, Charlotte's Adrian Zendejas named player of the week once again with the record-breaking performance. 12 saves in a single match, and so that gives him player of the week for uh, week 25. Uh, Nicholas Cardona from Chattanooga, along with Timmy Mail from Chattanooga, as part of your back line. Two from Richmond to finish that out at your back four. Stephen Payne and Stuart Ritchie. Mo Espinoza for uh, Chattanooga is in the midfield four, along with J.P. Sears from uh, Union Omaha. Neil Vinyals from Richmond. Aaron Walker from Greenville Triumph. Corey Bennett from Charlotte. And Corey Herzog from Union Omaha are your two up top. So that is your uh, team of the week for week 25 in the uh, in USL. Once again, reminder that you have the uh, playoff grid laid out for USL League One. It is uh, quarterfinals, October 21 through 23. Semifinals, October 28 through 30. Your final is Sunday, November the 6th. All League One playoff matches prior to the final, airing live on ESPN+. Plus. Times will be determined later on. But that's your playoff grid once we get through uh, October 15th, it's the next three weeks to determine a champion in USL League One. Don't forget, sign up for the newsletter to keep up with all the information that goes on in USL League One on a weekly basis. You can uh, go to uslleagueone.com, click on the banner, and sign up for the newsletter for USL League One. Uh, very, very cool stuff happening with the, the USL and FC Harlem. The world-renowned youth club is going to join the USL Academy League in 2024 and aiming for USL League One debut by 2026. FC Harlem Lions, leaders in our neighborhoods, earned global recognition for their work with inner-city youth and developments of future leaders on and off the field through soccer. Founded back in 1991, they provided affordable soccer and off-field enrichment programs for more than 10,000 young people for underserved neighborhoods in Harlem, the Bronx, and Washington Heights. Led by Executive Director Irv Smalls, FC Harlem's established itself as a valued member of the community, an exemplary alternative to traditional youth soccer models. So the USL and FC Harlem entered a partnership to create a new Youth to Pro pathway, expanding the club's impact in community through Academy and League One in the professional franchise. So very, very cool stuff with uh, the USL and FC Harlem out of New York. Started back in 19. 19- 91. And uh, that is all the uh, stuff that's going on this week in USL League One. Once again, very, very busy midweek weekend. Standings cramped as they always are. And so that means that everybody's got to be paying attention to what's going on in front and behind them. So well, the fans do the scoreboard watching, and all the players are the ones that uh, are chasing after full points as the season winds down over the final three weeks of the season. Reminder, if you are in market and can catch a game in USL League One, please do. You get to see the quality competition that goes on in USL League One every single week. If you're in market and can't follow along and be there in person, follow along on your local provider. If you are out of market and want to continue following along once again, go through ESPN Plus every single match in USL League One broadcast by ESPN Plus throughout the USL League One season. So for everybody here at SDH, enjoy what's going on in USL League One as the sprint to the finish continues. A lot of teams and not a lot of playoff spots. So uh, for everybody here at SDH, I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games of USL League One. There can be only one! 